Uh, I did not realize till very recently that in 2013, the legislative passed a bill we are not allowed to text in the car. Correct. And I was surprised because I have not seen anything said or done about it. So I think part of the problem is the police are so busy with other things that even if somebody texts, who is stopping them and saying you shouldn't do it? So if we do call about the cell phone, make sure that you also put in the texting and that it should be noticed and it should be stopped. Because that's the one thing I keep telling my grandchildren. Don't text and don't cell phone, but Absolutely. It's, it's a scary situation. So make sure the cell phone and the texting are in one and that we have people patrolling to make sure that they don't do it. Because there's no point in passing a law and not having anybody working on it. Absolutely. Democrats, we generally like research and data. And the data shows text messaging, cell phone use, it does increase accidents. So. Oh, yes. Thank you. I, I, I think uh, County Commissioner Marcus Martin. How's everybody doing? I, I just um, I just want to come out and say hello to. I feel I, I feel a little obligated to let you all know something about this transportation issue, and hopefully give you all a message out of it as well. I was on the transportation study committee for the state of Georgia uh, through the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia. Myself and the Chairman Bill Slaughter. Well, we got there. Uh, we brought up several issues that we thought could help the situation. Right. I'm, I'm into engineering, I'm into public policy. I, I look at the heart of the issues. We've got the data that shows, hey, 18 wheels create the most uh, damage to the roads and so forth. So we looked at, hey, what about the weight limits of the trucks? We look at the issue of, hey, maybe the strip of materials, maybe start looking at concrete and everything else. Um, they say that costs too much over the short term. Long story short, after having this discussion, and then I uh, asked the chairman of that particular committee what he does. And then we find out what the vice chairman of the committee does. All of them own truck companies. Okay? Oh, what I'm finding out as an elected official, and I'm putting this out here for you all to think about. A lot of times the foxes are in the hen house. Okay? And at the end of the day, they're against lobbyists. Why? Because they're in office now. The people that are affected by these policies are in office and they're able to direct policy from being in office. So I would strongly suggest everybody. Uh, you know, start listening to your constituents. Represent your people and get in office because if you're not in office, you can't help nobody. You know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, Republicans are good at this. They want more. They're good at this. They're, 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 they're strategic in nature. Um, recently, I, I got appointed on the, a recommended for appointment for the National Association of County. That's at the national level, right? Steering committee. I will be presenting um, data and policy to U.S. congressmen and U.S. senators. Because it's my objective at this point to start reaching outside of Georgia. Because it's kind of locked down. Uh, yeah, Dr. Clegg, you, you summed it up beautifully, OK? Uh, uh, Elizabeth Noel Newman, she writes a book called Spiral of Science. And in that book, in summation, it, it deals with how people can stand beside someone and let them talk about people they know and talk about even themselves. And not even say anything. They don't want, they don't want to look like they're poor people or they're with this crowd, that crowd. And so, you know, it's a very interesting concept. But I just want to let you all start holding. Start representing the people you are with. Because if you're not in office, you can't help nobody. At least get in office. And then try to increment some stuff. If I wasn't in office, I wouldn't have been up there on the Transportation Study Committee for the state of Georgia to find out that all the foxes are in the hen house that are making the decisions, that are doing the recommendations. So when me and Bill brought these uh, recommendations up, it didn't mean anything. And Bill, you know, he was conservative, but he was right along with me, standing tall with me on issues that he, he felt uh, really affected South Georgia. And all I can say is it didn't mean as much. Okay? So that's just something to think about. Thank you. If you haven't had a chance to talk with uh, County Commissioner Marcus Marshall, uh, please, he'll stick around for a couple minutes after, I'm sure. Uh, I never thought about running for office until about a year ago. Uh, and I just enjoyed it. Didn't win, but I got to talk to a lot of folks, learn about a lot of local issues. Maybe something you might want to think about. We need good Democrats like you running for offices. So 
And, uh, and you can get training at the Chamber of Commerce on Wednesday night. Great segue. This coming Wednesday, there's a candidate training mm -hmm. at the Chamber of Commerce. So if you or somebody who's thought about running for office, or maybe you haven't thought about it, but maybe you want to go anyway to hear what it's all about, it's just advice about how to get your campaign up and running, doing it effectively. If you know somebody, please, if you know somebody who you think might be a good candidate for office, whether it's city council or mayor, mayor election is coming up here pretty soon, uh, please uh, talk with them, talk with me, talk with Gretchen. Uh, we'd love to talk with you. Uh, another upcoming event, Azalea Festival is coming up, and we'd love to have a diverse group of volunteers talking with folks who are at the festival, uh, collecting names, uh, teaching people about democratic values. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, let me make sure. I get, it's, the, it's March. Help me out, March. Whatever I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Send an email out. 13, 14. 13, 14, 15, 13, 14. So if you would mind, even if you can come out for an hour, just to sit and hang out with us and talk with some folks, we could really use your help on that. So I'll send out another email. Uh, other than that, Lowndes County Democratic Barbecue. Uh, tentatively, we have it's July 7th. 7th. And it's firm. So, uh, that's going to be a Tuesday. Uh, it's a big event here, an annual event. Um, and uh, we are going to have some great speakers, perhaps even Dr. LaPlante might be there. Um, DuBose Porter uh, is going to be there. And so that's July 7th, you might want to put that in your books early. Uh, other than that, next month's meeting, we're going to be talking about local businesses. And we've got some fantastic speakers lined up. Myrna Ballard, President, Valdosta Lounge Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Andrea Schreier who's the executive director of uh, Valdosta Lounge County Industrial Authority. And then Baha Zayden, who is the CEO of Azalea Health. So it's going to be kind of a panel discussion next month. So if you're concerned about jobs in Lowndes County or South Georgia, uh, know people who are concerned about jobs in South Georgia, uh, somebody who's looking for jobs in South Georgia, this is going to be a great meeting. So make sure you come uh, next. It'll be uh, next week, Monday, to March 2nd. Yes, we have. Okay, well, but okay, this is just me because I'm really sensitive to space and stuff. But if I bring people, where are they going to sit? Are we going to be in here again? Because that's going to be really proud. Absolutely, and I'm glad you bring that up. It's something that we've been talking about. This is a good problem to have. I think we might have to move the meetings in the future. So we're going to try to find a location that's kind of intimate but has more room. Um, so we'll be looking around. If you have any ideas, by the way, someplace that would be cozy where we could have. Uh, well, and remember that any room that we use probably has a rental fee. So in order to be able to afford to go to a place different than this, we pay the rent here every month. This is what we pay for. If we go to another venue and it costs a hundred dollars to use it, we need to come up with a hundred dollars to be able to but use if, that. If we venue. can maybe find a church that has enough. To use space okay, well, there's a lot of people that aren't interested in coming to a party meeting at a church. Okay. That there's a church. Okay. issue. Then there's people that aren't interested. I mean, churches have a problem with having a party come to them because of their tax status. Um, the university has a problem with political things. I mean, there's a lot of... Even if the student Democrats host it? Uh, that could be a possibility. It's a tricky issue. We've talked about that possibility, and maybe we talk with uh, Dr. LaPlante. It gets a little tricky. Um, if we're invited, it might be a possibility. Um, but then we're, we're kind of reliant. Uh, we're reliant on so finding a new venue is is definitely in the future I would say you know Tom's talked about that but we're growing this is a great thing uh, so we're just for now um, we're next month's meeting is going to be here we're gonna do the best we can um, if you know of any place that you know where we could all fit please help us out so we are going to do something, though, I promise you. Thank you for, for being here. Uh, and, and I know it is tight quarters and everything. But yes, we have one more. Uh, just an uh, FYI for the group. Um, I did recently file my declaration of intent to run for the office of mayor. So. Speech, speak. <laughs> No, I, I just, uh, it uh, allows me to uh, set up uh, avenues for content, uh, campaign contributions and, and, and get active with my campaign. So um, I'm doing that right now. P.O. Box is up at uh, P.O. Box 173. If anybody is interested, P.O. Box 173, Valdosta, and uh, 
my platform is very simple. Uh, I was got to hear Doctor Leplet talk about transportation because public transportation is one of the issues uh, I plan to bring forward, as well as property tax and, and jobs. So. Just, uh, What's your name? J.D. Rice, R-I-C-E, J.D. Rice, oh, R -I -C -E, okay. J. D. Rice. Okay. retired fire chief in Valdosta. That's right, okay. Thank you so much. It's exciting news, J.D. Rice running for mayor in the upcoming election, so uh, um, you can use your support, so we're going to be doing things. That's one of the things we do in the Lowndes County Democratic Party, is support qualified candidates uh, like J.D. Rice. So, uh, again, we'll be sending out emails, uh, there's going to be fundraisers for J.D. in the near future, so please check your emails. I think only about a fifth of people we send emails to actually open the emails, according to our staff. So I know we all get a lot of junk mail, but please do me a favor, open the emails. We're going to give you information about things going on, fundraisers, these kind of things. Yes. Uh, Madeline Hightower here is the chairman of our board of elections, and she has graciously offered to allow our office to be a meeting place for free if you all would like to do it, either party, not just Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a large front lobby mm -hmm. yeah. that will be ideal for a meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Great. So, yeah, absolutely. So, I think uh, the officer will meet and uh, we'll make a decision. So, again, please check your email. We'll let you know if next month's meeting is going to be in the new location. So, uh, and we'll probably uh, contact you, call you perhaps. So, any other final? Uh, yeah, who's next? Yes, I made a mistake. Our Federation of Democratic Meeting, our monthly Valdosta meeting is Tuesday. We had to switch so that we could get the egg in our room. So if you're interested in Valdosta Federation of Democratic Women, we have Chief Brady Broom, who took over from Chief Bryce, and he's coming to speak to us at the egg and I, 12 o'clock Tuesday. Sorry, I'm going to stay Tomorrow? No, next week. All right. So it'll be next, next Tuesday, the following Tuesday. Yeah. Um, really appreciate all that you had to say, James, and that uh, fantastic rundown. And especially in regards to transportation, because this is something I've been interested in for a little while. And it's in regards to taking control locally, you know, because here in Valdosta and Lowndes County, this is where we live our lives. This is this is where everything happens for us. <laughs> and it's here that it, it, it is the most easy for us to influence what goes on. And when we talk about transportation, especially in regards to this multi-billion dollar bill that they're trying to do, because we already spend in Georgia something like 1.3 billion. And they're saying they're coming up with a shortfall of another billion dollars, so we're up to about 2.3 billion. Uh, it's my uh, understanding that the American Society of Civil Engineers figures in our country it would take us five trillion dollars to get our transportation, which most of the time means roads, <laughs> up to snow. Five trillion dollars. Uh, do you think we got that money? No. <coughs> we don't have that. We, we, hardly, we don't have $2 billion in Georgia to spend on that. And, but the reason what's going on, and, and from what I've been studying and learning about, is over the last 50 to 60 years, we have been on an experiment in how we build cities. Uh, I first moved into Atlanta in 1975, fall of 1975, and lived there through 76. It had a population, they just passed a million when I was there at that time. By the time I made it back by the early 90s, it was four and a half million. That is, and Atlanta is a prime example of an experiment that the country embarked on after World War II and how we built our cities. And it's called the uh, suburban experiment. And through that, we overthrew, we threw out like 4,000 years of how we built cities. 4,000 years of trial and error and understanding how to build cities for this experiment. And it was built around cheap oil, because 
that was very cheap at that time. And it was built around the automobile. Cities became less people-centered to become more automobile-centered. In other words, we lived way over there, we worked way over there, and we went shopping way over there. <laughs> Instead of in our neighborhoods like we had done for thousands of years. And thus, neighborhoods declined and, and went down, and uh, you know, a lot of different things happened to cities. Another thing was, it became very costly. And, and, and at the time, back in the 60s and 70s, we had a we pretty good amount of money. We had a, a prosperity going, and so a lot of things got uh, funded through the federal government, and then later through the state government. However, that money was easy, and it led to some growth and some quick stuff for the cities, and they became hooked on it. However, a road has a lifespan of about 25 years. After that, it needs to be redone, totally rebuilt, into a second generation. Well, that, with that, when, when the first generation ended, we ended up in the second generation of the 70s going into the 80s, we didn't have the money coming from up high. So in order to, to deal with it, well, a lot of places went into debt to finance these things. But now we are entering into the third generation or longer. And the problem is we now have obligations that we can't afford. So the whole idea is we need to rethink, when we talk about innovative ideas, we need to rethink how we do our cities and our growth patterns and how our pattern, it's called the pattern of development, works. And, and to return things to a more local level, smaller level, can actually get us a lot further. It can be a lot cheaper, and it can be a lot better. I, you know, return to our uh, neighborhood structures, because what makes a strong city, what we want here in Bell House and Lance County, are strong neighborhoods. And, 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 and that's what we have to concentrate on. And the only way we can do that is at the local level. So you know, this year when we have the municipal elections going on, we got to get involved and bring up these things, and bring up these issues. Because in the long run, it's going to help us. There are certain types of ways of looking at transportation. What's our return on investment? If we build this road up this way, we put in four and a half million dollars into it, what is the tax base that's going to pay for it? over that, you know, the, the, that, that, that lifespan of that, that time. And, and do, we, do we return, get a return on our investment? So that this is one thing I want to share with you, is that this is a, uh, an idea that is out there. And uh, we're not the only state in the union, the only locale that's faced with this. But we do have to face it. And it eats up a big part of our budgets both at the city level and county level. The market's probably thought so. how much we spend on that. <laughs> so anyway, that's my two cents worth, and I hope uh, uh, it starts a discussion on that. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jim Hogg. Appreciate it. Uh, anybody else have anything? Yes. I just wanted to, um, uh, please forgive me of my uh, party. Yes, I'm new to this area, so I've wound my way till I found it. <laughs> but uh, I'm Reverend Veronica Anderson Lewis. I just moved to the Valdosta area. Uh, I have been active in politics most of my life. And uh, uh, I realize that uh, as our country goes through what we're going through, that I need to get a little more involved. So I'm here to work. My husband just uh, uh, accepted a church here back in June, uh, Mount Vienna Andy Church. And uh, we're here in this community, and we're happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Well, thank you so much for showing up. We appreciate it. Uh, if there's nothing else, uh, you'll be done. I'd like to embarrass the chairman by saying that he's been doing a fine job of speaking up at city council and county commission meetings and at the town hall held by Mark Marshall. He's frequently gotten into the newspaper about that. He's doing a fine job of flying the flag and representing us all. Thank you. Great. So thank you. Uh, let's, uh, does anybody have a motion to adjourn? So moved. 
Second. That was a quick one. That was a quick second. Also. <laughs> all, the, yeah, all those in favor? Uh, <laughs> all those opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you so much for being here tonight. If you are interested in